38 million uh, Afghan people should not be punished because a 71-year-old figurehead of al-Qaeda uh, was living in Kabul. This money belongs to the Afghan people. And the U.S., for 365 days, has been holding their money in a New York vault, while Afghan people are boiling grass to eat, are selling their kidneys, are watching their children starve. This is unconscionable. That money has to be returned. The U.S. for 20 years built up a central bank in Afghanistan with a monitoring mechanism. It's one of the only things that continues to exist after 20 years of U.S. occupation. And now it wants to hollow out that central bank, create a separate mechanism. I think the Biden administration, instead of listening to the war hawks in his own party and the Republicans, should listen to the women's organizations in Afghanistan the 9-11 family members, uh, the economists from around the world, including Joseph Stieglitz, the human rights organizations, who have all said that this humanitarian crisis can only be solved by reinvigorating the economy and returning the Afghans' money to their central bank. Um, we're here talking about—I don't know if it's seven, um, uh, whether it's $7 billion or $9 billion, but half of that, because the other half the Biden administration is determined would go to the 9-11 victims. If you could respond to that, Medea. And also this issue—I mean, you're a longtime women's rights activist, a feminist, of the enormous crackdown on women and girls in Afghanistan how that money would not go to supporting uh, the Taliban who are doing this. The uh, lawsuits by a small number of 9-11 family members uh, really will enrich the lawyers more than anyone else. And I think we should listen to the September 11th families for Peaceful Tomorrows, who have spearheaded a letter that 76 family members have signed, calling saying that not a penny of that money uh, should go for uh, the 9-11 families, it should all go for the Afghan people. Uh, as a feminist, I am certainly opposed to the policies of the Taliban, which have been horrific in not letting girls go to secondary schools and forcing women to uh, cover themselves when they're out in public, in saying they can't travel around the country without a guardian. All of these things must be opposed. And we are in touch with the Afghan women every day uh, that are working to change those policies. But they are already victimized by the Taliban. They should not be victimized by the United States by stealing the funds that they need to get their economy going. There are about 50,000 women businesses that are still trying to function in Afghanistan. They need access to the bank to pay uh, for the salaries of their staff. Uh, pensioners, women, need uh, access to the bank to get their pensions. Uh, so, as a feminist, and I think all feminists should say, uh, let's help reinvent invigorate the Afghan economy so that people can get jobs and that they can feed their children.